Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at the Admiral Kuznetsov Soviet or Russian carrier that we have in DZS. We're going to go through, we're going to talk about it. Um, we've got Daishi, our naval guy. Say hello, Daishi. Hello. Thank you very much for putting, he puts all our stuff together. And this is all, I'll link this in the video description so you can come and look at it if you want. And it was getting a harder and harder and job for Daishi as the vessels get more and more complex. You can see this is pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. It's so complex. Um, but we'll start at the top and see how we do. So, heavy aircraft carrying cruiser, T-A-K-R, Russia, or aircraft carrier, CV, for NATO. Now, am I right in saying, is this the only Russian aircraft carrier? Do you, is that a thing? Yeah, they they had plans for more, but then the Soviet Union stopped being a thing. Yeah, was this... Okay, well, we'll go through it and see when it was built. Class details. This is a Project 1143.5 Admiral Floater Sovetskogo <laughs> Soyuz uh, Kuznetsov class is an aircraft carrier, but built with a VLS system with shipwreck cruise missiles. And we've covered shipwreck cruise missiles before with other uh, uh, vessels. This feature would allow it to navigate the Turkish Straits, uh, such as the Dardanelles, um, without violating treaties, specifically a limit on aircraft carrier size, but not capital ships going from or to the Black Sea. So Dardanelles links the Black Sea to the AEG and the Mediterranean, doesn't it? Um, this class would be the first to allow launching of modified fighters. Earlier characters were only capable of VTOL or aircraft, uh, like the Yaks, I've forgotten exactly, but... Yeah. A steam catapult was planned but never succeeded, resulting in a ski jump ramp to launch the aircraft, as we all know in DCS. The mission set intended for these ships were different than the US carriers, with a higher priority placed on anti... is that submarine or surface? Submarine? Uh, submarine. Anti-submarine warfare and air protection, specifically the CGNs of, of the Soviet Navy, followed by strike and shore landing support. This uh, CGN, is that uh, guided missile, cruiser guided missiles? or? Yep, uh, we're thinking like Kirov's. Yeah, sure. Uh, this class, though, would be severely impacted by the fall of the Soviet Union, resulting in only one of two being completed, pushing out Kuznetsov's completion and a cancellation of Project 0.7, a nuclear-powered variant. Oh, I thought this was nuclear. Also, the air wing was cut back, and planned craft such as the fixed-wing AWACS were scrapped. The aircraft carrier also has been criticised to have issues with its boilers and engines. It would go through repairs in the 2000s and is currently planning to go through an extensive modernisation project, originally planned to end 2021. But however, the floating dry dock that is the only Russian dock for large ships has sunk and hit her with its crane and as of 12th, 12th 19th, which is just a few days ago, isn't it, had a fire in engineering, poss possible prolonging her repair date. Her sister, sh her sister ship is now operating in the Chinese hands as the Type 001 Loi Ning with engineering fixes applied and finished with Chinese weapons and technology. I didn't know she had a Chinese twin. Yeah, originally it wasn't, but um, there's a long story behind that. I wonder if we'll get that on DCS. I bet we do, but okay. Um, DCS specific info, we've got the Project Point Five credits of class aircraft carrier, uh, heavy aircraft carrying cruiser. Um, Black Sea Shipyard, that place, Ukraine. Number oh, it's in Ukraine. Interesting. Admiral Flotus of that, formerly that. Leonard Brudsnev and Tbilisi. Pennant number those. Why so many pennant numbers? Is it just had different these different classifications for? I yeah, I think that they do pennant numbers by like roles mm. and which which fleet she's in and. Okay, uh, it was laid down. Wow, 1982. Uh, launch 1985, commission 1990. Okay, so that's an eight months from launch, from lay down to commission. That's a big build. Uh, um, yeah, they commissioned it right on Christmas. Yeah, right. And then the curtain fell, and then yeah, uh, twenty two were planned, one completed, one the USSR, uh, one for Ukraine. Oh no. Yeah. And yeah, it went from. Years. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, that's the long story. <laughs> Can you just explain this flowchart? I don't understand it. Yep. Yeah, um, what happened is um, originally they were trying to build it. It was about eighty percent complete. Then the Soviet Union fell apart. Mm. It was in Ukraine shipyard, so it became Ukraine's. They tried to sell it at one point with all the equipment still on it, 
no one bit. So then it just sat there for like 10 or so years. Then um, they went to sell it as scrap with all the uh, electronics and such removed. A, a Chinese person said he was going to use it as a casino in Morocco. <laughs> However, this company neither had a phone number and there wasn't no one at the listed address. Two years later, it winds up in Japan. Or not Japan, China. Uh. Roger. So, it's uh, one thing... Uh, so, I don't get it. The Kuznetsov... So, is the Kuznetsov Russian now? or And is there a second one that's Chinese? Okay. Yeah, Kuznetsov is the Russian version. Mm -hmm. The Varyag, which was the second one, became the young uh, Liu Yang. Oh, right. Crap. Right. Yeah, gotcha. Mm. Okay, general characteristics. So, 46,000 tons standard. So, that's oh, that's actually quite a lot, because I consider it a fairly, relatively small for a carrier. If you put it up against a CV, I find it relatively small. But I guess it doesn't mean it's not going to be heavy. Uh, full, just under 60,000 tons. The length is 270 meters. The beam, 35 meters. Uh, Waterline. Uh, the draft is up to 10 meters, 30 feet. The speed is 29 knots, which is not too shabby for 46 to 60,000 tons. The range is 7,500 nautical miles at cruise 18 knots. The crew is 2,000, which is... Oh, 2,000 ship, 600 air, uh, so 2.6 thousand uh, or 2.7 thousand overall. Um, which is small compared to... Again, a CV is like four or 5,000, I thought. Um, but... So, hmm, all right, so a bit. Engineering. We've got four times GTZ ATV124 turbines and eight KVG4 boilers. Each of them, I'm assuming this is the boilers, giving 20,000 shaft horsepower. So is that eight times 20? Is that 160,000 horsepower total? Oh, shoot. I need a little check. I think that was four boilers leading to that. I got to check that. Roger. Closed all my tabs on this. And what are we actually burning here? Is this, is we... That's oil. So this is a bunker oil or something, okay. Four shafts uh, with fixed props. We've got nine times 1.5 uh, megawatt turbo generators and four 1.5 megawatt diesel generators. And we'll come back to the horsepower. Electronics, and there is going to be a whole shitload. So settle down and get your cup of tea because we're going to be a while. We have the Mars Passat radar suite, NATO named Skywatch, never heard of it. Um, yes, send. Yeah, the, the horsepower total is 200,000. Holy bananas. Right. All right, I see, because it's, uh, yeah, that's what we did there. Uh, 200,000 horsepower is a lot of horsepower. That's a lot. And that's why you get your 29 knots, I suppose. Okay, fair enough. The range of this uh, the Skywatch is up to 325 kilometers, up to 30 kilometers, which is uh, 90,000 feet, basically as high as anything we'll need to look. It's a 3D long-range radar. It failed due to technical, political, and cost issues. So Skywatch, oh, so it's not operational. So this never happened. Yeah, they tried to, and I think this is one of the casualties of uh, the all the Soviet Union. Mm, I see. Right. Yeah. It it appears like, um, if you notice the four flat panels mm -hmm. when we get to the model, that's what this was supposed to be. I think it was going to be their version of the spy radar. Mm, interesting. Okay, fine. Uh, we've got the MR750 Fregat MA top plates. This is normal um, for, for Soviet era or Russian ships. Up to 300 kilometers, 90,000 feet air and surface search radar with IFF. Okay, so that's top plate. And uh, two times MR350 Podcat, um, up to 33 kilometers to 600 meters altitude. This is a two dimensional air and surface search with track wall scan war warning radar for surface to surface missiles. Yep, uh, they're looking for cruise missiles. Roger. Uh, is Podcat the NATO name, or is there just no NATO? I suppose there's no NATO name for this. None that I've been able to find so far. Roger. Two times MR212-201 Palm Frond. We, we, I remember these. Uh, this is uh, 46 miles. Search, sorry, surface search and navigation. Uh, so this is our kind of almost civilian radar, if you like. 
Um, below that, I've got Voigash U, Vagash U, and Nayada M. What's that for? Uh, that's just the name of the radars. It's like two different components. There's reason why you got two different numbers. Roger. Okay, next we've got two times MR320M Topaz, NATO name Strut Pair 2, uh, up to 280 kilometers. This is a two dimensional medium range air and surface search using two NATO strut curve radars back to back. That's interesting. Is it literally copied their radar or is it just similar? Um, yeah, it's two identical radars. You'll just see it. It's like two raid, uh, two dishes, just one back to back to the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got a lot of sensors on this thing so far. We've got Resistor K42, Cake Stand. I've not heard of a Cake Have we come across Cake Stand so far? No, I think this is exclusive to uh, Kuznetsov. Roger. Uh, we've got up to 74 kilometers up to 90,000 feet. This is Takan ATC, an automated landing assistance for SU-33 and possibly more. How interesting. Yeah, I've never heard of Cake Stand, but that... Makes sense why it is unique to this air, uh, this carrier. Two times gaze on radars. Flytrap B. Again, I haven't heard of Flytrap again. ATC system, most likely using other identified radars for control. Okay. Next, we've got four times 3R95 groups cross sword. I don't think I even recognize cross sword. Uh, up to 45 kilometers, uh, 20 kilometers of TV, and 3.5k maximum altitude. Uh, this is going to be missile control, isn't it? Uh, yep. Yes, fire control radar for SAN9 Gauntlet. Um, SA9N. Um, so that's a NATO reporting name. Do we know it's S... Uh, what's the gauntlet? That's annoying. Uh, those are Keenzels. Right. Okay, yeah. so it uses radar and TV camera. Can track up to four targets. Can also control the AK-630 Gatling guns if targets get through the gauntlet defense. Okay, that's going to be interesting seeing them. And we'll be talking about the gauntlet missiles in a bit. Next, for eight terms, three Papa, eight, seven, hot flash. Haven't heard of hot flash. Uh, this is a 0 to uh, 0.2 to 22 kilometers, up to 7.6 kilometers. Wow, that's needlessly hard. Oh, no, to, no fine. Um, 30,000 feet or wherever it is. Uh, fire control radar for the CADs. N1 Kashtan gun. So these are the big rotary cannons that we're going to come look at in a bit. Three times MR123 uh, Vineport. I just noticed a hot flash. We've got eight of them. That was crazy. Uh, yeah, one for each, uh, one for each uh, Kashtan. I'm Roger. Wow, there's a lot of Kashtans. Uh, we've got the Vimpold base tilt, which we're very familiar with. Up to nine kilometers. Fire control radar for the AK630M, each appearing to each appearing to possibly control two times AK630M each. Okay, uh, so these have multiple sensors, these AK-630s, don't they? they have backups, redundance and whatnot, I remember. Yeah, and uh, each pair is like side by side, mm -hmm. so it's like I'll be controlling two of those each. Roger. Next, we have the MGK-355TA Polynom T, horsetail and horse jaw derivative. So we've got 74 kilometers for each. We've got a whole mounted sonar for tracking submarines, torpedoes and mines, integrated suite with the horsetail, which is active, passive, VDS. I'm a bit rusty. Remind, my, remind me on VDS, Daishi. Yep. Uh, variable depth sonar. Basically, it's uh, like a small little piece of gear you can tow behind you. It can either do active pings or it can just listen to targets. And you can also use it to get below a layer that can form sometimes, which can mess with sound. Roger. Understood. We've got the MGK-365 Zvadzda M1 Oxyoke uh, with a derivative of Oxtail, 29 and 14 kilometers. This is whole mounted sonar, new generation after the 355 series integrated with the Oxtail, which is basically this is the replacement then of the previous 355. Okay. The MG-717 Amulet 1, question mark, question mark, is a dipping anti-saboteur sonar able to find data unable to find data so this is something you dip in the water and it looks for frogmen right yeah it's like a, a different version of the braslet mm -hmm. um supposedly from what i've been reading from newer versions of it uh you can use it to speak underwater mm. and if they continue to get close after you warn them <laughs> it's called a uh, intensive warning mode where you turn it up so loud it hurts yeah i bet mm, interesting okay well, the Altin here, a system that measures speed of sound in water, which is, of course, variable with density and whatnot. 
Uh, we've got an MG35 still 2 underwater communication system. We've got the uh, right, we've got pluses, minuses. So we've got the old um, Can Tata 1143.5 large ship ECM suite, similar to the one seen on Peter the Great. Uh, right, and then has this been. Oh, so is that until 1984? Yeah, it was like during the build, they. Mm -hmm. They're putting in the cantata, mm -hmm. but then they removed it and put in the uh, the new um, mm -hmm. next gen. So uh, you might be able to pronounce. Yeah, so it's been replaced in '84 with the I um, can't pronounce that BR next generation ECM suite for large ships only on the nets off. So it's unique again. Names to NATO call signs may be inaccurate, but functions are correct. Within that, we have the four times P five one one antenna flat track NATO reporting name. This is Elint. Um, antennas pointed at 60 degrees each on a ground on a rounded large platform. So this is electronical intelligence. This is um, you know electric intelligence gathering. Interesting. Um, and 10 times TKD46RP Bush uh, Bell Push Ball Shield. Sounds interesting. Yeah, um, um, yes. So what's going on here is. Um, one of my sources used some older names mm -hmm. than some of the others, so I put the older, outdated names next to it just to try to be consistent. Roger. Okay, so we've got um, electronic countermeasures. What's ESM? AS ESM? Uh, electronic support measures. ELENT is like a part of it. Roger. M most collected near the wine flasks and other bells to near the cake stand. Okay. This is going to be fun looking around the superstructure on this, trying to find all this lot. Uh, four times MP207 wine flask, the ECM jammers, likely with the ESM if like the uh, MP401. Eight times MP405 start two, one glass bell nip football. Uh, the ECM jammers RWR and also controls the PK2 and PK10 decoy launchers, which we'll come on to look at, uses random, uh, sorry, uses radom, radomes from the Cantata. Okay. Next, we've got two times two PK two M. That's two hundred each, up to six kilometers. Turreted decoy launcher, manually loaded, loaded from under deck. Uses standby uh, the as TST forty one prototype anti IR the forty seven chaff anti radar the forty seven low temp IR decoy the anti IR uh, the forty seven black white cloud. Never even heard of it. Anti laser. So the stuff must be like a cloud of dust you put up or something to stop the laser, TV That's and laser. Green. How interesting. Uh, we've got the TCO 47 Pyro Reflective Anti-IR Laser, the TSTM 47 Modular Shell Anti-IR Laser Optical Radar, possibly. TSR 47, like that one there, but uh, better efficiency in 1991. Wow, that's a lot of countermeasures there, Daishi. Yeah, it's like uh, there's 200 rounds in each of them. It's, wow, what a beast. Think of, like an, think of like an old school 1940s turret. That's the way they load it. All right. That is yeah, really, a massive defensive thing. It would be cool, I must admit, if we had um, these countermeasures in DCS. Imagine the ship just blasting 200 flares up in the air or something. I know it would probably kill the servers, but, but it would be cool. Um, we've got 12 times 10 PK-10 chaff launches linked with wine glass. Uh, must be loaded with all of same type. We've got A3 CP50 chaff, 50 cloud for IR laser, 50 flare and anti-laser in 1989. We've got the 50 combo 91. We've got the CM3 masking curtain, which is a modification of the that there in 1993. Note chaff flare launches numbers may be inaccurate. Other sources claim that there a lot of different things yeah nothing's very straightforward with this one <laughs> yeah yeah it's just, it just just feel like that we've got three times rotan uh nato reporting name tin man i think i remember tv based iff iding hello helo control and target tracking so it's a big it's a big tv camera basically they can zoom in very far that we have on modern ships 12 times spectra f l o 82 half cup and line of sight is going to be its range Laser IR domed missile warning system also seen on the SU 24H Bear TU 95. Didn't know that was a thing. That's cool. Two times P790 Corral. Sorry, did you want to say something on that? Yeah, I was going to say, like, think about, like, with the, uh, the later Soviet um, fighters, how they're able to detect IR. Mm -hmm. This is a form of that. 
All right, interesting. Okay. Two times P792 Corral BN NATO reporting name punch bowl satcom telegraph GPS lot navigation 8 to 250 meters accuracy 6 to 15 minutes legenda connection. I'm not sure what that means. But. Um, that's a uh, satellite. That's like a monitoring satellite system. They only got like a couple of them up there, but what it does is it listens for side lobes from uh, from your radars, and it will pinpoint locations of not only you but enemy ships with that. Wow, cool man, very good. Okay, two times uh, Krillstall BK Lowball first gen repeater Satcom data speed max five point two kilobytes per second ECM resist speed with that B A B U A D. We've got a Tsventar SATCOM connection to Tsventar network for surface ships, data speed, that. Was that it's a sat that's another satellite again then? Yep, another sat system. Okay, uh, second captain, Bell Crown, a data link system that sends data to command and receives a list of approved commands. What's that then? Is this for other ships? Well... The old version of the way they did data link was is you would receive your commands from shore. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would be until the 1970s when they did the test which brought the Kirovs in. Mm -hmm. Because they realized that I guess it took too long for them to get the commands out. And mm -hmm. roughly what the second captain is, it's, it's more closer to like a voice command thing. Mm -hmm. So you tell them what's going on. And then the admiral gets the picture together, mm -hmm. and then he tells his ships what to do. This is more of giving them options instead of giving them direct commands. Roger. Right. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, we've next got uh, Bell Push. Jay's listed as a data link unknown if system is both ES, ECM and data link or misdesignated gear. Exploration, Emancipation, uh, TV landing system, probably similar to the trap cam used on the US, okay. TUR-434, Aviation Combat Command System, what's that? Uh, probably that you use to help uh, control where all your aircraft are, it's almost like ATC. Yeah, Roger, Luna 3, Optical Landing System with Saturn Landing Lights, okay. Lawn, Naval Fighter Guidance System. Um, okay, so it sounds a bit similar to Tour then. Uh, Baser, second generation automated navigation system designed to be modular to fit many different ships. Okay, we've got a control with a designation here. Info and navigation system transmits position and center data from units to, com to a command post. The Buran 2, automated communication equipment system. The TSDI provides information exchange between different weapons, radar, and uses and users and sources. The Lizarub 4342 CCS combat control system splits data between mission types such as anti-air and missile defense can be used to control entire formations. That's a lot of different systems. It's an amazingly different amount of systems. I'm surprised it's not more integration there. Or maybe there has been more integration there. Well, I think mean, like part of it is is that this is like mm. when Aegis was just coming out mm. was like when they were starting to build this stuff. Mm. So okay. I probably still a little more split. Roger, regarding the color coding, is the dark um, yellow mean anything different to the light kind of white color? If it's or the same color, it means it's all like the same entry. I just did to make it a little easier to read. Yep, makes sense. Okay, next, we're gonna go to Armum, and surprisingly little, uh, but then again, it's gonna be defensive, uh, mainly. So we've got two times one SP-1M, uh, which is, oh, 76 calibers, it's a gun. This is a gun. Yeah, I think it's a saluting gun, but it's remote controlled, so it's like, why would you remote control a salute gun? Roger, is it twin barreled, or have you got two of them? I didn't even know how um, had a gun on it. No, it's a. Uh, you just got two one barreled. Mm, I wonder if. Like, I wonder, did on each side of the ship. I wonder if it's something to get the. Um, maybe again to get the cruiser designation. You've got to have a gun on it or something. I don't know. Interesting. I think it's just more for tradition. Like I said, like, I. I don't know if it's ceremonial or if it actually has a combat purpose. Oh, it's a lot of money for a ceremony, but okay. Uh, we've got the shipwrecks. Like I said, these, you know, aircraft carriers aren't really, they're not designed to shoot other ships down and stuff like that. The aircraft carrier is an aircraft carrier. But to get it through the Dardanelles, we had 1 times 12 P700 granites, which myself and I see have looked at recently. They are uh, SSN-19 shipwrecks, which are um, pretty crazy anti-ship weapons. Uh, uh, 620 kilometers, massive thunking great warhead or a nuclear warhead. 
and designed to fly in groups of one will fly high and designate. Ah, this is interesting. I've never read this before. Designated to fly in groups of four to eight, one will fly high and designate targets for the other group. It can prioritize targets and designate two targets if other targets were destroyed. How amazing! This is not a thing in DCS, but it is pretty cool. Uh, can also hit land targets, use inertial guidance, active radar homing, home on jam, and pardon me, Legenda satellite if available. Wow, how cool is that? So you fire a bunch of them. One's going up high where it's not going to get shot down because we've we've flown them like over a hundred thousand feet at Mach three or four or something stupid it was, and it's going to designate somehow data link that to the other missiles and you know command them. What a piece of equipment, and it's massive, and this gives a clue as to why these are so expensive. We were looking, we've done a video on, uh, did you see our video on these uh, missiles we did recently? Uh, yeah, I did. Obviously, we, um, we didn't know much about them, but the, the information there and the costs and everything like that were absolutely fascinating. Also, one other thing is, like, supposedly it might have a jammer on it, and it's also got the ability to perform evasive maneuvers mm -hmm. if it detects that it's being targeted. Hmm. It is ridiculous. Wow. If you really, really want to destroy a ship. Okay. Um, I mean, it's a lot of money to destroy a ship. You've got to send eight of them out. That's like... Well, okay. Anyway. Uh, let's plod on. Plod on. Uh, 24 times 8. Um, 3K, 9.5. Oh, I can't say it. Kinzhal. Is that 128 total? Yeah. SAN-9 gauntlet missiles. Uh, up to 12 kilometers with 14 and a half is that kilos of HE... Frag. Um, so the, oh, these are tall missiles. Right. I knew I knew them. I just couldn't think where from. So from SA, this is SA-15. Yeah, gauntlet. Right. Uh, cold launch. Uh, really good missiles. Uh, designed really for shooting down shoot down planes, but they also shoot down missiles really well. Uh, with better guidance, allowing two missiles per target. I wonder if these are going to defend the ship today. Probably not, but... So these are going to be shooting down missiles, basically. Six Cortic SeaWiz modules. Uh, these are CADS S N1 Kashtan. Uh, so does that six mean? Yeah, that's six times two. Yeah, there we go. Um, uses NATO hot flash radar and TV optical combo missile guns at the sea. So these are turrets. Each turret has two guns. Uh, each gun is an AO 18K 30 mm six or seven barrel rotary cannon with variable RPM. Um, with these whopping great bullets, 30 mm. 9,000, well, RBM cannons larger and slower shells than the Phalanx Seawears. Uh, 500 rounds each. Okay, these are the different rounds that we can have. Um, and what have we got here? What's the 2 times 4, 9, 3, 1, 1? Where are the blue boxes? 40. Yep. Oh, on top of it having two guns each, it also has two ah. uh, clusters of four missile launchers on each of them. Yeah, I remember. So it's got uh, Tunguska-type missiles then on each turret, on each uh, uh, Kashtan turret, uh, which is a 9-kilo uh, uh, warhead with round. Uh, now, these uh, these are um, these are kind of optically guided on, on the Tunguska, but, but TVM-guided 5mm blast radius with laser radio fuse, because I think they're impact fuse on the Tunguska. I may be wrong, I can't remember. But, okay, essentially Tunguska missiles on them. So this is one heavily defended ship. Um, now, I don't think that is going to shoot down a missile. I may be wrong, but uh, Tungus, Tunguskas, I know, don't shoot down missiles. So I'm guessing that's for yeah. aircraft, close-in aircraft. That's all I can think of there. Well, I think what they did was they made these track via missile, which means the missile receives the it receives all the inputs from the... The radar, or at least well, that's it gets an idea where to go, and then it tells it where to go. So, Roger, so that's the difference with being on a ship is that this doesn't have to get be guided by its normal kind of sackcloth type guidance. It can also inherit uh, guidance information from these various sensors that we saw up here. Um, so that's why it's going to be yeah. more complex than we'll have in a um, in an aircraft. Okay, very yeah. good. Um, yeah, think about the description given for the Patriot missile. It's mm -hmm. roughly the same system. I'm Roger. Okay, yeah. Uh, we got this, 6 m 6 AK-3630M, 30, and now is this separate to the cash town, or is, is these the cash towns? These are different guns. Bloody hell. Jesus, we've got a lot of guns. This is his six, six barrel rotary cannons, 5k is max with our rounds there, 30 mil, 10k RPM, C with M variant credit issues with the base model. There's a lot of rotary cannons on this. Uh, 2,000, 4,000 each, 2,000 belt. 
Um, 2 times 10, RBU, 1,200. It's going to be anti-submarine, isn't it? Uh, up to 3 yep. kilometers at 600 meters. Uh, I don't understand that. 100 meters to 3K at 600 meters. Uh, what does that mean? Um, that means that it can fire up to that distance and it will sink 600 meters. Right, that, right. Okay, the ammo is stored below. We've got... Uh, well, it's an anti-submarine rocket launcher with anti-torpedo capability. That's interesting because it's essentially guided right, in a way. The, the, the launcher's guided. Um, connected to the sonar suite. Uh, the 120 kilo timed warhead designed for underwater targets. The 86 high explosive proxy intended to create an anti-torpedo minefield. And the 111 SO sound decoy noisemaker for uh, torpedoes. Very good. So that's our armament. I'd be interesting if it's got the shipwrecks in DCS. Wouldn't it be interesting if it had the shipwrecks in DCS? It actually does. That's uh, what sunk the uh, it's what sunk your carrier in the coffee campaign. I had no idea. Right? How about that? It must have been. I wonder how we got the target information. How interesting. I guess we'll find out soon. Uh, could have data linked with the uh, 33s. I'm not sure. There's like so many different ways for that thing to get a target yeah. lock and. Life. Roger, Roger. I guess we'll just see what happens. Right, aircraft has, uh, this is going to be long, um, has capacity for up to 50, 52 aircraft and helicopters by design, but the mission loadout was never realized. Actual loadout depends on mission and aircraft store. Sample loadouts, 15 SU-33s with one SU-25. So a lot, lot, lot of people know that the SU-25 is a naval version, the, the UTGs, which I think are still going. Um, I was just reading in a magazine. Yep. With 11... These are not what most people think they are, though. <laughs> Roger. Uh, 11 ka 27s 14 uh, sorry that's oh hang on I'm a bit confused yeah the slash means a different loadout right okay oh right and, and 11 ka 28 or oh, 14 su 20 33s and 10 mig 29ks and 2 mig 29s kub and 2 su 25 utg with the 13 of these choppers and two of these choppers and so on and so forth okay um, so choppers, KH-37PL, um, now we're not going to go through every single statistic on here, but could you summarize the 27PL Helix A and what it's used for? This was designed to replace the KA-25 because it could search for subs or it could attack subs. This was designed to do both at mm -hmm. the same time. Okay. So it's got like a bigger, uh, well, it's larger uh, cargo capacity and it can carry more Torpedoes or death charge bombs or sonar uh, buoys. Roger, yeah, because I'm looking down the the stuff here. You got death charge, large death charge, signaling in bomb. Uh, what's the AT1M? Is active passer? Yeah, so it's all anti-submarine stuff, isn't it? Yep. Very good. KA29. Can you summarize that, please? This is the 27, but modified as a troop transport. Mm -hmm. They they armored it up and. Uh, they put like a flexible minigun in the nose and it can carry all sorts of lovely missiles and such, which uh, Discord gun. Yeah, uh, this is interesting actually. So you've got the uh, Sacklos Radio Link uh, missiles, you've got UB 32, B 8 uh, rockets, 500 kilo bombs. I've never actually heard of a K 29, but okay. Very good. And 16 armored troops and so on. Very good. KA-31, can we summarize this, please? This is a helicopter AWACS. Mm -hmm. It was designed to be a stopgap measure, but then the Yak uh, AWACS never came up, so this is what they did to fill it. Yeah, very good. Okay, interesting. Um, we're going to go to the KA-52K KTRAN. I don't know this either. It's heavily equipped. Could we go to this, please? This is the two-seater version, well, the KA-52 is the two-seater version of the KA-50 oh, Blackhawk. Right. And then the K version is the naval variant of it. So it's a very, very, very nasty helicopter to, with also uh, the ability to go do a little extra recon, right. which is what the second person's for. Right. So two-seater KA-50. Yeah, I've seen them. I always wondered about them. With, yeah, I'm looking at the armament here, and it's all KA-50 stuff, isn't it? How interesting. Very cool. Okay. Excellent. SU-33, we all know, of course, is the Navy version of the flanker. Uh, it's a real piece of kit. A little bit heavier, a little bit slower than the other one, but 
um, but really exceptional. Um, uh, all types of uh, air to air, air to ground, all sorts of types of mission sensors it has. I'm going to have quite a few of them on board as well. Okay, very good. Uh, next, we've got the SU-25 UTG. Do you want to go over that quickly? Yep, this is a variant of the Frogfoot. They designed a couple of Frogfoots to be used for training. And then the UTG is a variant designed to get people used to landing on the carriers. Mm. They would first use like a mock-up on land, and once you pass that, then you take these Frogfoot Bs onto the uh, carrier and practice hooking on there. It's also got like an extensive sweep to, uh, like, so that the trainer in the second seat could put in different scenarios for you to deal with. Mm. But in order to make room for all that, they pretty much took away all the combat capability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I painted a lovely blue. Uh, we've got the MiG 29K KUB. So I'm guessing the K variant is the uh, naval variant. Um, yep. And the KUB is the trainer variant. Right, so this is like the mini SU-33, basically. We do just about... Uh, yeah, this, this is actually the MiG-29. It's the fulcrum designed for carrier duty. Mm -hmm. What happened was, back when they were building it, it was supposed to be MiG-29s for close range and then 33s for long range because they were designed to mm -hmm. deal with different American aircraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the SU-27s, which became the 33s, were meant to deal with the Eagles and the Tomcats, mm -hmm. and then the 29K was built in response to the F-16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But once the Soviet Union fell apart, they ended up having to compete against each other. Mm. Well, it's nice to see they both made it onto the carrier anyway. Yeah, but the problem is, is that the 33s are kind of on their way out because no one ever really bought them. The Chinese had an option to do that, but then they got a hold of a prototype, and then they just reverse engineered that one, and the Indians didn't want it, mm. which is the reason why the they went with the uh, this SU-27, and then that's the reason why the Russians are now getting them. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Excellent stuff. There's a lot of good reading there. Um, do you want to go over your notes? All right. It's recommended to handle Kuznetsov in a different fashion than other carriers. But it's focused on protection against air and anti-submarine over airstrike missions. It'll try to create scenarios in which it will try to drain the opposing carrier of its air wing and make the opposing carrier useless, especially if paired with other cruisers. She's had quite a few engineering problems over the years, though. Probably exacerbated due to the fall of the Soviet Union blanking the budget, meaning that they just haven't been able to maintain her well, and her horrible luck hasn't helped things. If things keep together, she can present an issue for opposing strike plans. And her upgrade project is supposed to replace the the boilers, the Kenzels with the new SAM, and the Cortex with the Panzer M, which is like a beefed up uh, Cortex. And there may be other ones, but with all these incidents, I don't know if some of the upgrades have been scrapped or not. Mm -hmm. So, we've got a KH-27PL there, we've got the KA, or the KA, sorry, the KA-29 there, they all look the same to me, these helicopters. Um, we've got the KA-31 there, we've got the KA-52, yep, right, so that's the, that's the two twin-seat Black Shark, makes sense, I know what that is now. SU-33, we all know, the UTG there. Uh, we've got the UTG cockpit. Ah, that's the 29K, is it? Hmm. So it's so it's going to be beefed up landing gear and rest of hook and whatnot. Yeah. Correct. Um, is it two seater? The K? Do we know? Um, I think the KUB K is two seater. Yeah, the KUB version is the K version is not. Wrong. It's almost it's based off of the 29M, so it's roughly going to be like that, but with uh, carrier modification. Roger. Okay. Um, on the right there, we've got Tsvezvia uh, yep. BR Group. That's, that's my attempt at making a diagram of what I uh, what I think all of them are named. Right. So okay. You go to look at pictures. Which is going to be complex. We're on the island now. Ooh. So um, we've got the cross sword there. Uh, Podcat. Uh, I think there was several of them. Well, Corral there, Strop Pair there, Crystal there, Resistor. Well, that's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, 
Biggin. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Crystal BK again. Topaz there. Oh, we've got... Oh, yes, we have multiple of them. Uh, we got the Mars Passat. Was this the one that never made it? Yeah. Roger. We've got more Podcat Cross Swords there. We've got the Rotan there. And we've got the MR750 at the top plate at the top of the island. Oh, yeah, before we leave this picture, one mm -hmm. thing I want to bring out is when you look at the resistor, yeah. you'll notice there's a little peg thing that's right next to it. Mm. That's part of the ECM suite, and a lot of people miss that. <laughs> I almost missed it. That is very small, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't even look like it's a part of it, but it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, we're we talking about the yellow. I completely yeah. missed the yellow. Right, yes. So that's part. So that's the ECM suite, then, you can have either side of the island. Yep. Wow. And uh, the little the little thing right underneath the uh, mm -hmm. egg stand is part of it, but even, uh, even Charlie here missed that one. It's... Like yeah. I said, not a lot straightforward about this. Interesting. Okay, very good. Um, and then we've got this uh, large picture. Oh God, we've got a lot of webs on this, haven't we? So we've got the uh, we've got Gauntlet launchers back there. Oh, the VLS, aren't they? I see. Yep. I hadn't noticed that before. How interesting. We've got the RB twelve hundred there. We've got uh, Cash Town there. Cash Town there. We've got a separate AK-630, got AK-630 there. We've got uh, the gauntlets there, VLS. There's gauntlets on each corner, basically. And then we've got see, there's an AK-630 there. We've got a gauntlet fire there. We've got cash tans here. We've got, what is this? This is the shipwrecks, apparently, on the ramp. Yep. How odd. Yeah, it's flesh mounted. Now, how weird. Okay, well, apparently we have it in DTS, so we'll go and have a look. Uh, more cash towns this side. This is one heavily defended biarch. I'm just trying to look for any weak spots. More gauntlets. Uh, we've got the PK2. Do you remember what the PK2 is? ECA, it's CCM based, that's isn't the, it? Uh, that's the turreted uh, Decoy shaft launcher. launcher. Modular. Yep. And we've got um, AK-30s there. Okay. Very nice. But some of these are going to be redundant. Roger. Uh, and then we've got a whole bunch of systems here. Woo. Loads of systems there. Oh, I see the gun. The 76 mils there. Uh, all sorts of defensive measures. Interesting. These are... Oh, another, another 76 mil. Okay. Sources. Lots of them. Wow, amazing work, Daishi. Right, we will give you the link for that so you can come and look at that. Otherwise, we're next going to jump into DCS and have a look at the model. So it's a relatively old model, so it's not high definition. But let's see what we've got. So we've got Gauntlets, VLS, Twin, Cash Tans, I'm going to guess they are. RBU 1200. Standalone cash town. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, uh, no, AK630. Can you see yep. it okay? Yep, it's coming good. 630, RBU, twin mounted cash towns, as in fully twin. Saturn lights. Separate uh, 630s. I never noticed all this is here before. Uh, twin cash town turrets. You got your VLS. Oh, look, I see, this, I see the shipwrecks. Hang on. I can get this working. Do you see where I'm pointing there? Can you see the shipwreck? Oh, yeah. It's VLS, look. How interesting. So every time you take off, you take over the VLS cash, uh, shipwrecks. Uh, twin cash tan turrets. We've got VLS. We've got part of the ECM battery by the looks of things. We've got I think that one's just the uh, launcher for like a boat. Oh, crane or something. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it doesn't look like this has the any ECM on it. Or at least the chef. Fire engine. That's you've been used recently. AK-630 pair. And the lift. And we're back. So we've on to the island. So from here, we've got... Uh, oh, God. Uh, cross sword? Question mark? Correct. Hey, super cap. Oh, look. It's interestingly, it's got the dishes here for the 3D radar. But yeah, um... Whether ever mount uh, actually working or not. 
Yeah, I heard on some one ship they put concrete slabs where they were supposed to be. Right, yeah, okay, that's probably what they are then. Uh, got another cross sword here. Um, can we remember what this little guy is? Uh, that's Podcat. What up, Podcat? Mm, any idea, guess at him? I'm not sure. I think that's too low poly. Roger. Right, we're over here. So that is... Is that strut pair? Yep, that's one of the strut pairs. Roger. We've got another one of these little guys. Here is our ECM Elint suite that I'm trying to kind of look at. Up and down there. Uh, we've got a funnel. Multitude of antennae here for communications, presumably. Do you reckon these are satcoms or what do you reckon these are? Those are probably more of like line of sight communications of some sort. Understood. Strap pairs, cross sword. Uh, we've got our top plate at the top there. With a top plate standing still. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, interesting, isn't it? Um, what was in the drum? I forget. That is a cake stand. A cake stand. Uh, we can't remember what the two domes are. We saw it before. Uh, that's part of the ECM suite. Right. Oh, no, wait, no, those two domes are for the, uh, those are punch ball, I think. Punch ball, right, okay. So, next thing we need to do is uh, show you how to move it. We are going to go choose a slot, a game master, and we're going to grab him. We're going to set path, and the first thing we're going to do is move him over to these guys here, so we can have a bit of a scrap. A left click, left click, right click, confirm. Choose how many knots, and I want to go... That many was not miles per hour annoyingly. We can have it on fire, return fire, or hold fire. And we can have it on red or green state. If you're on red state, it will uh, tend to action stations quicker. And um, we can look at adding target in a bit. And she's a bit of a slow mover, so we have to speed up to get her going. But once she gets her steam up, you can see she's up to 32 miles an hour or something like that. Now, out of interest, what happens if we ask her to attack something? I have absolutely no idea at the moment, but purely out of interest. I wanted to attack that target there. Is she going to do anything? It would be funny if a shipwreck came out. I know it's feasible, but it's one of those things where it's like, it's not optimized for that. No, it's just not, certainly not in DCS. No, nothing. Okay. Right, so no obvious um, launch capabilities. Let's uh, zoom a little further. Roger, and it looks like the 76mm guns aren't here. So what we're going to do is move in close now and uh, see if we can't get some, at least get some cash towns firing. We're approaching some ground targets now. We have absolutely no idea if it's going to attack them or what's going to happen, but let's see. Oh, hoo -hoo! We've got a uh, we've got a treat today. Oh, you've always wanted this. I do, I do. Oh, it's literally my dream. Oh, she's stuck. I've ground beached her by accident. That doesn't matter because she's still going to fire. Jesus, look at that. The scary thing is, there's only one quadrant. Yep. Look how quick! I don't think we've ever taken it down this quick before. Thirty mil round. The C might have. Ugh, I don't know. Maybe not. feels like Star Wars is watching like the different points just start blurting out the shell. Jolly satisfying. Happy about that. I managed to beach it, Daisy. I've got too close to the coast and I beached it. Yeah, well, that cruiser our carriers aren't really meant to get this close. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I made some pretty good DACA. Yeah, it has made some good DACA. Really made short work of that. It's trying to get these guys behind here, look. Can I get them?
There you go. Pretty cool weapon if you want to shoot a couple of clicks into land. Next, we're going to see what anti-ship abilities it has. Offensive and defensive. See if we can get the shipwrecks to fire at another ship and so on. Okay, attempting to use shipwrecks. Add target. This would be cool if it works. Oh, it works! Oh! That was a friggin' shipwreck. The size of the thing. Let's see if we can get another one coming out. Look at them. They're like... These things are like the size of F-15s. Another one just came out. I missed it. Damn it, that's annoying. Yeah, imagine this thing trying to fire when you're about ready to launch. Look at that. You see the size of it? It's as big as an SU-33. Yep. That is super duper cool. I fully approve of this. Yeah, she is an interesting vessel when she's working. Why? Right, so we know the Gaznet stuff actually has working shipwrecks then. And they are gonna. So these, are the, these are the P700. So these are gonna go low. Right. Let's see what Mr. Destroyer can do about them. They're fast moving. They're supersonic. Oh, out go out go the uh, defenses. Probably gonna shoot them out as they detect them. I think. I think they've, they've got a big old radar signature and they're quite high. Woohoo! That's the one with the thruster veins the thrust, in the behind thrust it. Thrust vector, yeah, how interesting. Right, so it's, um, yeah, I mean, we want to test if it fires and it does fire. Uh, it's going to be a war of attrition who run, runs out of missiles first. Right, next we're going to do a uh, broadside against another vessel, and we'll see who wins that standby. Okay, next we've got our ship. It's going to be attacked broadside by a 52C destroyer, which is massively powerful, by the way. Um, you know, modern Chinese 2000s. Destroyer. Uh, very useful piece of kit. Really modern. Comprehensive ELS suite. And uh, we're not going to control them. We're just going to let them fight. At the moment, they're going to be way over the horizon. They don't, um, don't have any data link or anything to help them. Chinese got going first. Oh no, the shipwrecks are out as well. So these defensive or. So you've got the YJ60. Let me try and work out what's what here. The HHQ9. Mm, too rusty. That's the uh, YJ-83, that's the YJ-62, no, YJ when you ship this off. That's the, um, the Vector Thrust uh, uh, missile killer. So, this is going to be interesting. So you've got a bunch of anti-ship missiles here. Boom! I just don't think those shipwrecks are going to... Woo! Much nicer model on the Chinese. God, these are slow, aren't they, compared to the ship? These are 400 knots, the YJ-62s. And these are 1,000 knots. But we've got really good radar on this destroyer. Really modern sweet. Look how early it can shoot these down. And you've only got, what, 16 shipwrecks on this? Now, is it is the Kuznetsov going to defend itself is the main thing. The problem in DCS at the moment is the vessels just won't defend themselves. I don't know what's going on. Oh, yes, it is. Ooh, hoo, hoo. What's going on? How about that, Daiichi? Get some. It's the gauntlets. The gauntlets are going out. Woo. We're visual now. Here comes another YJ-62. Come on, let's have some more gauntlets. Oh, there goes another shipwreck. That is all of the YJ-62s down. Where are we at the moment? I can't believe we've got many left. This guy here is plodding uh, more... I think we're out of... Uh, surface, surface missiles. No, we're not. What's going out here... Defense. Okay, we're out of shipwrecks finally. We're going to move in. And she's had her guns removed, so this is going to be a gun battle now. It's all about can she survive? Oh! Get action! She's an easy target, boys. Oh, 
constant impact. She is tough. Oh, here you do. There we go. Have you been watching the fight? Yeah, I've been able to see it at least. Pretty cool. He doesn't seem to have sustained any damage. I'll go and check the. I'll go and check the health. Oh, she's almost dead. Look, she's almost dead. Oh wow! Not much you can't really defend from a hundred meter, hundred millimeter shell. The uh, the island's on fire. She's going down on the stern, I'm pretty sure. No, she's not. She's on fire inside. is not even firing anymore and that's it that is a dead not sinking but a dead because nets off so it just can't defend from that so next guys we'll put some um aerial warfare against her and i'm probably going to die but we'll see how i die now, she doesn't have any long range area defense so i'm going to be able to get fairly close at least sw anyone sw i remember sw should come up as TP, top plate. Oh, there it is, I see her. Currently only in nails. Okay, we have a spike. Ah, we have a missile. Gonna be a gauntlet. Altitude, altitude, altitude. Let's see what she can do. Spike. I'm more worried about the Tunguska missiles. Pull up. 
Miss sucker. Oh, he got me. Son of a bitch. Alright, that's it. The, the SW is probably shipwrecked. Interesting. Alright, let me go it for it. Cool. There's a good Way to get those cash turns firing. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's a lot of defense. There is no evading that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Jesus. Does it have the old Russian weakness from the top? It does. Ah. Oh, maybe not. Oh, you win. <laughs> did he get you? He did. He got me fair and square. Those, uh, the gauntlets are actually a lot better than I thought they would be. Right, that's our presentation on the Admiral Kuznetsov. Uh, please go to the link if you want to read further into that. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you later.